Quotes are for books, and this is quality television. We interrupt this tragic tale of family betrayals, hidden secrets, and ponies killing each other for a public service announcement from your local broadcaster. This chapter of your favorite Friday night guilty pleasure will be hosted by yours truly. Who am I? I shouldn't say. Not till you've earned it. Which makes it a good thing you can't see me through the words on your hoof print tattered screen. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's get on with our favorite primetime programming. Tonight's broadcast is sponsored by generic brand medical adhesive strips, celestial slide personal lubricant, and viewers like you. Yes, you. If you didn't watch, we'd be off the air for sure. And now we return to Cottage MD. Where the fuck am I? Clear. Psh. Ow. Who the fuck just shocked my chest? Charge to three jewels. Clear. Ksh. I woke with a gasp, surrounded by doctors, one in particular with his face too close to mine, shining a tiny flashlight in my eyes. What happened? I asked. Dr. Cottage stopped shining the light in my eyes and said, Uh, you died? Died? I looked shocked at his declaration. You're kidding. My friends and I were going to sleep in an abandoned motel in the middle of the wasteland, and then I was here. I retorted groggily. Nope. Pretty sure you died. Trust me. I am a doctor. It happens sometimes. Jameer was standing at the end of the bed looking at Dr. Cottage. Cottage, it sounds like she's having delusions of a post-apocalyptic wasteland. If you'd let me treat her with the antipsychotics, we could have asked her what happened when she first started feeling symptoms. Are you an idiot? Dr. Cottage asked. Don't answer that. The answer is yes. If you would have given her those antipsychotics, the experimental drugs I gave her would have trashed her kidneys. Oh. So let's cut out our time in half by screwing with her heart with dangerous drugs. What well, sounded like 21 said from behind Dr. Cottage. We could actually do real doctor stuff and give her an MRI instead of playing mad scientist with experimental treatments. Dr. Cottage turned back and looked at me again. Don't worry. She's just angry because she's dying of an incurable disease that'll make her frail like a toddler and eventually make her brain dead. The treatment was completely safe. Heart attacks are just one of the possible side effects. As he talked, I looked around the room and noticed I was in a hospital. Not a refurbished wasteland hospital, but a real hospital with doctors and nurses everywhere. Like in some pictures of one of my books I looked at while in my stable. It was a nice hospital, too. I hope I don't get charged hundreds of thousands of caps for being treated here. Where are my friends? Dr. Cottage gave me a strange look. Right. You're insane in the membrane. Your friends are figments of your imagination and don't exist. I'd be your friend, but I don't like anyone. Anyway, my name's Dr. Cottage. I'm a diagnostician who takes on strange cases of illnesses that other doctors are too stupid to figure out. I know. You treated one of my friends? Really? I don't recall venturing into imagination land. Of course, I never recall when I go on painkiller drug trips, Dr. Cottage replied. Can I please give her the MRI? 21 asked. No, she'll just freak out again and ruin the results, he replied. What if we sedate her? 21 asked again. You know we're doctors, right? We save ponies, not kill them, except for that one director guy who was a huge dick, Dr. Cottage answered. What the fuck are you talking about? I feel fine, except for the nagging pain in my chest from being shocked. I don't know how I got here, and why I'm hooked up to all this crap. Then I looked down at where the IV went into my left forehoof. Where's my pip buck? How the hell did you manage to get it off? Great, now she's freaking out again. I'm not getting bit trying to restrain her, 21 said. You're right. Being in here is distracting us from the real problem. That is why I don't see patients, Dr. Codge retorted. Ignoring me, they all walked out of the room like I was a piece of chopped rad roach. I have to find the others and get the fuck out of here. And most of all, find my pip buck. I started to look around the room more and saw that there was a window on the right hoof side. 
I slid my hind legs off the bed and took the IV stand and my magic to wheel it with me. Then I slowly walked towards the window and pulled back the curtain. As soon as I did, I was blinded by sunlight. Real sunlight. This can't be real. How'd all the clouds get cleared? Then I looked down into the hospital courtyard. Green grass, too? Where the hell am I? This is Prince Town, Ponysboro Teaching Hospital, apparently. Stardust said from the doorway of my room. I quickly looked around to see Stardust standing before me in a lab coat. Ah, oh, thank the goddesses you're here. Why aren't you just like a doctor? Oh, don't tell me you're all weird and twisted, too. He shook his head. Nope. Woke up talking to some of Dr. Cottage's fellowship doctors in some weird accent. This place is weird and I want to go home. At least I know what'll kill me in the wasteland. Here I could catch an odd disease and die a horrible death. I rolled my eyes. It's a hospital. I'm sure they take some sort of precautions. Why do you think doctors don't get sick? He huffed. I can still get sneezed on, bled on, or worse, barfed on. Bodily fluids are always being sprayed around in places like this. You were fine in Frosty Summit when Wingnut was sick. I don't understand why you have a problem now. I said, trying to get past his germophobia. Frosty Summit only had Wingnut. And that disease wasn't contagious. I hate hospitals and medical centers. Always have. There was this one time in Stable 97 where there was this flu going around. And the clinic was full of other ponies expelling fluids out of every orifice. And I ended up getting sick because one of the ponies walked into the clinic accidentally sneezed on me. Stardust argued. Oh, get over yourself. You'll be fine. Plus, I have a feeling this place isn't quite in the wasteland. Look outside. He looked past me at the window. Is that the sun? Yeah, I thought my first time seeing it would be cool, but it turns out I'm hooked up to machines and IV bags in a place that thinks I'm insane and stinks like a hospital. There's also the fact that I'm missing something. I held my left forehoof up. It's gone. What are you talking about? Your horn's still there. He said, sounding puzzled. I'm not pointing at my horn, you idiot. I'm showing you that I don't have my pip buck. That means someone here has it, and if I find it's my mother, there must be some sort of spell she cast so she could get away. But that doesn't make any sense. She had that magic suppression ring on her horn. First of all, I'm not an idiot. I just don't spend a lot of time looking at your freaking pip buck. Second of all, remember that the area the Mattel was in screwed with unicorn magic? Stardust said. I scratched my head. Yeah, but that shouldn't affect my the horn ring, though, right? He shrugged. I don't know, I always figured magic was magic. No, it's not, but there's got to be some sort of explanation to all this. I remember walking into the motel room, then I switched on the light. Then I was waking up here, being shocked with a defibrillator. Have you seen any of the others? No, you're the first I've seen since I found myself here. I don't even know where here is, besides that I read on the sign in the hallway. I mean, I've seen Dr. Cottage and stuff, but he's different than usual. He's still a pill-popping ass, but he doesn't seem to recall being in the wasteland. For a second there, I thought he still contr though I contracted the same disease, and they were trying to figure out if you have it or not. But then he just contemplated me on dropping my ridiculous accent. And then he told me that I should get a, mare, a main cut, because... If I didn't have to spend an hour of it every morning, I might make it to work on time. But I don't even work here! Stardust explained. A second later, a nurse walked into the room. Excuse me, Dr. Knight. Your patient in maternity is ready to deliver. You should head down there and get scrubbed. He turned around and looked at her. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll be there in a couple of minutes. As he walked out of the room and turned back towards me. I guess I do work here. I don't want to deliver a foal. Why the fuck do they need to scrub me? I feel cleaner here than I did in the stable. Scrubbed means dressed for surgical work, jackass. Aura said from the doorway. Jeez. There was a big sign on the door that said in red letters, Shadows in the room, every pony. Where are we? In a hospital. Stardust and I said in unison. She grabbed the bridge of her beak inside. I get that part. 
I meant, where is this hospital? I've never seen or heard of it before, and outside it looks like the war pretty much never happened. I even saw a few zebras in other rooms that didn't seem to be terrorizing any pony, and some of them were patients. I started disconnecting the machine that tracked my heart rate and oxygen level from my foreleg, and it started to beep. Aura, uh, can you help me with this? She walked over and ripped the plug out of the wall. There. Problem solved. Then a bunch of nurses ran in. Uh, or not. When I s they saw that I wasn't in immediate need of medical care, they stopped and stared blankly at me as if they didn't know what to do, so I spoke up. Tell Dr. Cottage I'd like to be discharged. The nurse in the front said, I don't think that's a very good idea. You had a very serious cardiac event. I don't care. Trust me, it's not my first one. He experimented on me, and I don't feel very comfortable under his care. So go tell him to discharge me, I said sternly. She shook her head and led the rest of the nurses out of the room. As the last one turned out the door, Stardust said, That was weird. Why didn't they just tell you no? Maybe it's before the war, when you could say you wanted to leave the hospital and they let you leave, Maura said. Doctors aren't supposed to keep their patients prisoner until they're better or die. I took a moment to think about it. Maybe we can get out of this by playing our parts? Stardust looked confused. What? Play our parts? You know, like a story. I'm clearly a patient with a weird disease. You're a doctor, and... I don't know what Aura is supposed to be in this situation. However, I think if we act out these specific parts, we might eventually find the others and be able to get out of this strange world. I explained. No way, Kimosabi. I'm not going to play doctor with some random mare and deliver her foal. Stardust protest. Come on, it can't be that hard. Just don't drop it. I retorted. Aura rubbed her face with a talon. Shadow. That's not how it all works. Didn't they have a health class in your stable? Yeah, but that doesn't mean I paid attention, I replied. She sighed. That was apparent when you said just don't drop it. I hope you know how wrong that sounds. Ah, uh, well. I guess it's a good thing you won't be having a foal anytime soon, or at all. I couldn't imagine what you'd do if you had to give birth. Stardust looked thoughtful as he said. So there is a plus side to the same-sex relationship. Okay, fine. Maybe don't play our parts, or whatever. How else are we going to get out of here? Plus, we still need to figure out where Windthrasher or Ecalus and my mother are. I said as we looked over at Stardust. And bite me, Dusty. I'm sure they're around here somewhere, Stardust said. Grimoire is probably trapped in the psych ward. Or Callus is most likely hiding in a shadow somewhere waiting for us to walk by so he doesn't have to look for us. And Windthrasher is probably a patient like you with tests being done to see why she looks the way she does. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the way she looks, but I'm pretty sure that in this setting, like, something like her is either an impossibility or just extremely rare. Hey, two of those are actually good suggestions, Mora said. You're just like a doctor, maybe you should go check the patient logs. Stardust cleared his throat. No, ma'am, I am a doctor. I overcharge ponies to cut them open and always have cold hooves. While you're here, I could give you a flu shot. Just go check them already. I'm not in the mood for one of your stupid routines. Or interrupted. Jeez. Laura, don't be a buzzkill. Anyways, how am I supposed to know where the patient log is? I don't really work here. Well, I do, but I don't know where stuff is. He replied. She rubbed her face. Oh, this is making my head hurt. Go out to the nurse's station to look for a terminal. It should be on there. At least that's where it is in most hospitals I've explored in the wasteland. That would probably be a good idea, huh? Stardust said, rubbing the back of his head. He walked out of the room to do as she asked, and then Nora walked over to me and started fiddling with my IV. Here, let me get this out. You don't want this tube to get stuck on anything if we have to run, because this is all some elaborate trap meant to kill us. I think we've- Ow! Sprung the trap already by winding up in this mess. Lesson learned, never turn on lights in strange places. How are you supposed to know this was going to happen? 
Who says it was you turning on the light that triggered it? She asked as she removed the needle and applied the generic brand medical adhesive strip. Wait, why did I just describe a medical brand adhesive strip like that? Why can't I just say it is... Ugh. Some pony help us. I just have this feeling that the lamp had something to do with it. Maybe we found one of Squirrel and Moose's supernatural creatures and got screwed up because of the coincidence. I replied. That seems highly unlikely. The supernatural creature thing, sure. Maybe this is a strange situation we've been put in. But I don't think it was by some monster. Aura said, doubtfully. I sighed. Are you sure? Because this has freaky scribbled all over it, and I don't want freaky all over me more than it already is. It was then that I noticed that I didn't feel Aquila trying to push her way out of my consciousness. I'm sure this has to be something different. I don't think there's some random monster out there that puts a group together in a shared dream and eats them all while they're blissfully in slumber. She replied as Stardust came back into the room. So I checked on that sick ponies list thingy, and I didn't see Grim or Artie Callus on the list of patients. But I did see Wind Thrasher. I guess she's in the free clinic on the first floor getting treated for poison joke of all things. Sounds like she got off easy, I said, feeling relieved. She's lucky they didn't want to run experiments or tests on her to see what she is. If we can get down there and find her, then maybe she can help us find the other two with her enhanced senses. Cottage MD will return after these messages. Tired of feeling sick after eating irradiated food? If you are, then you should ask your doctor about letazine. The heavy metal radiation treatment guaranteed to put a damper on radiation sickness. Here are some options for current letazine users. I use letazine on a daily basis to combat radiation sickness from food accidentally exposed to magical radiation, and it works wonders. With letazine, I don't have to worry about if what I eat is going to make me sick or not. Letazine is a miracle drug! Do not take letazine if you are pregnant, as it may cause birth defects or a miscarriage. Some patients have experienced discomfort while using letazine. Letazine can cause some serious life or life-threatening side effects. Speak with your doctor immediately if you are experiencing the following. Fever, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, addicted to eating metallic objects, heavy metal poisoning, or death. Hello, see this frying pan? See this egg? It may look like I'm about to make a delicious breakfast here, but I have an important message for you. This egg is your brain. This frying pan is drugs. Crack. Sss. This is your brain on drugs. Using illegal drugs will rot your insides and turn your brain into useless, stupid paste. So set an example for your peers and say no to drugs and alcohol. It could change your life. If you or a friend is having trouble with drugs or an alcohol problem, please seek help as soon as you can. And don't be afraid. Thank you. Need an ice cold beverage to cool you down in a flash? Then crack open a Spock of Cola. Now available in our rocket bottle. Blast your taste buds with flavor as fast as a rocket launches to the moon with new Sparkle Cola Rad. Find your equestrian classic beverage in any of these select retailers and enjoy the ultimate thirst quencher. Hey, how's it going? Boy, do I have a treat for you tonight. Do you ever get sick of having to peel, shave, or husk your own fruits and veggies by hoof? Well, now you don't have to worry about all that hassle with the Chaos brand FV Stripper. Just simply put whatever you want in the top here and press this button, and then presto! It's as easy as that. Just drop, press, and eat. But wait, there's more! If you order right now, you'll get this exclusive offer at the Chaos brand Mini Blender for all your blending needs. Absolutely free! And if you place your order in the next two minutes, you won't get just one FV Stripper and Mini Blender. You'll get two of each! And that's right, two! And with no extra cost. So call a number at the bottom of your screen, toll-free, at 1-800-347-2673. That's 1-800-347-2673. Shipping charges may apply. Tonight on PMZ, we catch up with Sapphire Shores after her on-stage wardrobe malfunction. 
Is that Princess Cadence walking around the Crystal Empire with what looks like a full bump, or is she hiding a cake addiction like her dear aunt? Plus, we'll take a look at the pony who managed the to paparazzo a paparazzo. Tonight at 7 p.m. equestrian time. We now return to Cottage MD. What the fuck just happened? Stardust asked. I have no fucking clue. It sounded like a bunch of weird advertisements. I replied. The better question is, how the hell we got down here? Aura said. I proceeded to look around and noticed that we were no longer in my room and were now in what looked like the hospital entrance right in front of the clinic. Guys, this is getting weirder. I don't remember coming down here, do you? No. We were in your room upstairs, and then there was all that weirdness, and now we're here. Like I said before, I want to go back to the wasteland and that shitty motel with the moldy mattresses that smell like something died in them. This place is weird and makes me uncomfortable, Stardust said. Aura pointed at Talon. Looks like the clinic's right there. We should go see if we can find Windthrasher. Doesn't look all that big, so it shouldn't be too much trouble. They followed as I walked through the clinic doors. The clinic was full of sick ponies in the waiting room, with a very arrogant-looking Dr. Cottage standing before them. Okay, is every pony here feeling sick today? They nodded. Snuffy nose, fever, chills, possible coughing. They nodded again. It's a cold! Go home! Eat some freaking soup and go to bed! You'll be better in a few days! As they all got up and turned around and looked back at me. Aren't you supposed to be dying? No, I feel fine, I said plainly. Hmm. Congratulations, you're cured, he said with a sarcastic grin. Well, when you actually do die, make sure your family doesn't sue me for malpractice. Sue? Oh, never mind. Anyhow, there are other patients I must miraculously cure beyond all odds and belief, he said as he proceeded to walk away. Excuse me, is there something I can help you with? Otherwise, if you're a walk-in to get examined, please write down your name here and wait for the call-up, the receptionist at the desk said. Um, I'm looking for my friend Windthrasher. She's apparently being treated for poison joke, I replied awkwardly. She smiled and looked down at her terminal. It looks like she's in exam room three right over there. Thank you, I replied. We walked up to the door and I turned the knob of my magic. What I opened the door to surprised me. Occupied. Oh, sorry. We were looking for our friend, I said quickly. Shadow, how'd you get in my dream? And Dora too? Windthrasher, or at least it sounded like Windthrasher, said while soaking in a small wooden tub. Why didn't you ask why I'm here, too? Also, why don't you look like you normally do? Stardust asked. She blushed. Um, no reason. I was getting to you. They said that I was affected by poison joke and needed to bathe in this stuff to get rid of it. I told them that I normally look like this, but they didn't believe me. When she said she normally looked like that, I noticed that Windthrasher didn't look like her normal self. She was... normal. Not normal, as in her normal, normal, as in not sharing DNA with any creatures. Her mane and coat were the same color they usually were, but her wings were feathery like a normal pegasus. Her eyes were blue instead of yellow and didn't have slit pupils. I couldn't tell because she was mostly in the water, but I don't think she had scales either. I was going to say something, but Stardust did before I could. On the contrary, you do have some distinct differences. She quickly covered her face as if she was hiding. Like what? My mane didn't turn Nicky Green, did it? Stardust cleared his throat. Uh, no. You, um, look different. Like, really different. Yeah, you look like a normal cloud muncher like Stardust does. Aura senselessly blurted out. Windthrasher shot up and looked at her reflection in the mirror on the wall as Bubbles slid down her colt and back into the water. How the... Just so you know, 
I interrupted. This isn't a dream. What do you mean? She asked, sitting back down into the water. It looks like we're in another world of some sort, Stardust said. Something happened that made us go to this place. After we were in that abandoned motel, and Shadow decided to turn on the light. After that, we all woke up in strange places in the hospital. Apparently, I'm a doctor, which doesn't really make any sense. Shadow is a patient with a weird illness, which is just her normal brand of weird. And Dora... I don't know about her. She just kind of showed up. Did you guys hear those weird ads, too? When Thrasher asked. Yep, and there's no one hearing them, either. Aura replied. What about Grimoire and Oricalus? When Thrasher asked again. I sighed. We don't know yet. None of us have seen them around at all, and I don't even know where to start looking if they were here or not. If anything, this could be some elaborate traps of my mother, even though I highly doubt that. How could she know we were going to that specific place? And there's also the fact that she was tied up with a magic suppression ring on her horn and Oricalus watching over her, Stardust said. When Thrasher got out of the tub and started to dry off with a towel, I hadn't noticed that when we came in. So, what do we do now? I scratched my head and looked around at each of my friends. I don't know, I guess we could try and look around down here. I'd say check upstairs for Mom and Oricalus, but I don't want to be shoved back into a hospital gown and experimented on again. The doctor cottage here seems more dickish and nuts than the one we know. We left the clinic and went into the lobby, only to be hit with a serious case of where the fuck are, do we go now? The only places on the main floor were the hospital administrator's office, a chapel for some reason with a religion I didn't recognize, a cafeteria, and a gift shop. Why don't we talk to the administrator and see if we can make sense of our situation? When Thresher asked. Because they'll just throw us in a padded room with straight jackets and mouth guards so we don't bite our own tongues. Stardust said, as if that was the obvious thing that would happen. Which he was probably correct about. How about we go to the gift shop and play with the cheap toys for dying children until they break? Not to purposely break them, but to pass the time. Plus, it's not like this place is real. Maybe you should be put in a straight jacket, Featherbrain. Or a hissed. I don't know. The electricity ramming through my chest felt pretty real. I said, rubbing my chest with a hoof. Well, hungry or not, I'm hungry. Can we talk this over in the cafeteria over some real food with no radiation? Aura asked. Rule number one about being in a strange place away from home. Don't eat the food. Stardust said. Why not? I asked. It could be really gross and give you the sh uh, <clears throat> food poisoning. Otherwise, there's a chance that it could be made of other ponies, which they keep locked in the basement. Stardust replied. Ugh, why can't we all agree to go to one place? And why is that always a bad side to go with said place? The administrator will think we're insane. The cafeteria probably has fucked up food. And the gift shop, well, the gift shop doesn't sound too bad. But there's still a possibility that something in there is waiting to fuck with us, too. What about the chapel? I asked. What are we going to do in there? Pray for release from this hellhole? Aura asked. I'm just saying it's an option with no downside. I retorted. Uh, sure. No downside. It says, Church of Chaos! Right on the door. Sounds sketchy. Stardust said. That's it. Fuck this. Fine! We'll go to the fucking gift shop! All the ponies in the lobby stopped what they were doing and looked at me in an awkward silence. We walked into the gift shop and I noticed that there were more stuffed animals with sayings on them than I was comfortable with. Not to mention one over-enthusiastic Nurse Joy who was standing in the cashier's counter. Well, hello there! Is there anything I can help you with today? I haven't seen her since I was recovering from surgery in Hidden Sands. I forgot how annoyingly cheerful she is. No. No, no. Somebody has a sourpuss. Was there a death in the family? 
she retorted to my answer. No, but there's going to be death soon if you keep asking me questions, I said angrily. You know what? I have a big fluffy stuffed bear that would be perfect for you. Maybe it'll lift your spirits a little. Oh, and I also have a sugar-free lollipop, she said, completely ignoring my remark. Okay. First of all, stuffed animals are better for fire fodder than material objects. Second, sugar-free lollipops taste like sun-dried shit on paper stick. And third, leave me alone and let me browse in peace. I just want to get the hell out of here and go home. I said again, hoping she'd finally stop. Oh, well, I could get you some fun toys to play. I interrupted and proceeded to exclaim, Shut up! Instead of reacting like a normal pony would, she just smiled and said, Okie dokie then, I'll leave you to it. Wow, harsh much? Stardust asked. What would you do? Not that, he replied. You could have been calmer and nicer. I could have shot her too, but I don't have my gun, now do I? I asked. What put you in a bad mood all of a sudden? When Thresher asked as we walked around the store. I sighed. I'm just frustrated is all. I finally get my mom into a position where I can finally try talking some sense into her and jury-rigging her head so she doesn't think I'm an imposter anymore. Then out of nowhere, I see one of those fucking things and turn it on and end up screwy fucking in a hellscape. Then I realized what I just pointed at. Right on the shelf was the same lamp in a row with other lamps that looked exactly the same. I looked down at the price label for some reason and read what it said. Discord lamp. Twelve bits. Discord? Like Lord of Chaos Discord? Windthresher asked. Stardust scoffed. He was retrapped in stone by the Ministry Mares over 200 years ago. There's no way the statue was turned in to survive the war, especially sitting in the castle garden. Windthresher put up a hoof. Well, actually, I found out that the statue was moved to a research facility during the war by rarity. It was in some messages I read on a terminal somewhere when I was traveling after I left Stable 9. How would he get out, though? I asked. He couldn't have, Stardust said. He was sealed with the Elements of Harmony, the strongest weapons in the Ministry Mayors have ever had in their youth. How do you explain this, then? Laura asked. I can't. Stars replied. Oh, but I can, the lamp said as it started to move. Step into my office, Discord said with a snap of his ceramic claw. We suddenly found ourselves in the office of the hospital administrator, sitting in front of a desk with a very familiar-looking Draconius sitting behind it at a terminal wearing a suit and horn-rimmed glasses. He looked at me. So, Miss Starr, you were admitted to Princeton Ponysboro Hospital with chest pain, psychosis, and some slight death. No, I was teleported here by your stupid lamp that looks like you, I replied. He scratched his toughy goatee with a lion paw. I see. So still feeling some symptoms. I'll inform Dr. Cottage and the rest of his fellowship, starting with Dr. Knight. Stardust retorted in a strange accent. I'm not a doctor! Why are you talking like this? If you don't fix me, I'll fucking bump ya! With what? Your didgeridoo? Discord asked. I oughta! Stardust yelled with a hoof in the air as if he was going to try hitting the apparent Lord of Chaos. He smiled and typed on his terminal keyboard. Moving on to you, Miss Thrasher. I've seen you've responded well to your poison joke treatment. I actually preferred you the other way, but I guess it can't be helped. Such a debilitating ailment those wonderful plants can spring upon you sometimes. Jerk, when Thrasher said, proceeding to stick her tongue out at him. Ah, yes, very good. You, mutated chicken, you're just here as a visitor to Miss Star. I regret to inform you that she's completely lost her mind, Discord said, tossing a brain from his claw. What the fuck do you want with us? And how the hell are you even here right now? I asked. He put up one digit on his lion paw and waved it in my face. Ah, ah, ah. No one likes a potty mouth, 
Then my mouth appeared to turn into a toilet for a split second as he snapped his claws again. There, that should help. After all, sometimes children watch what their parents. As they all sit in the living room enjoying their MSG riddled microwave dinners in front of the television. What the fudge is a television? Ah, why can't I s shell say fudge? I replied, apparently no longer able to curse. But you just said it, my dear. Don't tell me you can't recognize words anymore. Anyway, on to your question. Right now, you're in a world of my creation. You see, a fifth-dimensional creature such as myself requires a certain amount of amusement in order to not go sane. Discord replied. You're not fifth-dimensional, Wentwasher said. He put up a digit. No, but I lived long enough for there to be considered a fifth dimension. Details. Always with the details. Anyway, never mind that, and welcome to TV Land! What's TV Land? Stardust asked. You also never said what a television was. Discord smiled. That's because your universe never invented one, even though you had all the means to do so. A television, for example, is a terminal monitor that displays recorded plays called shows. And even better, commercials and infomercials that pop up right when the good part's coming up, which is so chaotic I almost cry kittens every time it happens. He literally cried kittens as he said that. TV Land is a world of my making inside such a device, commercials and all. But why'd you bring us here? And how? Thrasher asked. He leaned back in his chair, which changed from an office chair to a rocking chair as his outfit changed to that of an old lady and sounded as such, but retained his own voice. Let me think. It was chapters ago in a place called the Fiend Town under Stable Nine when I first met Chateau. She was trying to save her newest friends from certain death from that awful pony Gator, and I saw her through that downpour of the raging thunderstorm that was cascading water all over my tiny 60-watt light bulb. I guided her and shared with her wisdom, only to be blasted away with a mighty explosion. I found myself in many different places, from junk scavengers to traveling sales ponies. I was finally brought by the former manager of this fine establishment. However, when she turned me on, I took pity on her and sent her to a place where she'd be happier. His voice normalized. Who says I can't be a nice guy? And then Shadow came along with her friends intact and with a few more. So I gathered up what magic I could spare and brought the four of you here. I would have brought the other three, but it seems my magic doesn't work on them. Charms, technicalities, and all. You still haven't explained why you brought us here and... How you're not a giant hunk of useless rock, I said plainly. He smiled. I was saving the best part for last. I brought you here to see if you'd be willing to help little old me. When I... No, absolutely not, I said. You're the Lord of Chaos and tried to take over the world. <laughs> so, Celestia and Luna were clearly running it into the ground anyway, what with all the nasty war business. I was just pitching a better option before that happened to be an issue. The early bird catches the worm, you know, he retorted. Stardust pounded a hoof on the desk. Yeah, but you're still an evil bloomin' snake. Put a sock in it, will ya, you little outback reject? With a snap of his claw, Stardust's mouth was stuffed with a rolled-up white and pink sock. Much better. Hey, fix him before I... I started to say. Before you do what? Shoot me? Kill me? In case you haven't noticed, you have no weapons. And I'm not stupid enough to lend you my fancy letter opener. It was a gift from a dear friend. She brought my mail every day without fail and had the re best set of cross eyes you ever seen. Discord interrupted. Stop going off on tangents, I said. I am aware I don't have any weapons, but I still have an ace to play. He laughed evilly. What, your little disease living in that head of yours? I thought you would have caught on when I said my magic didn't work on the other three of you. It seems you're not very perceptive. I left her in your little birdcage in your unconscious body. 
Do you have any idea how dangerous she is? I exclaimed. Quite as I imagine. She's almost as powerful as I am when I'm whole. Whole? I asked. His smile disappeared. Ah, it seems my tongue has slipped a little too far to the side again. He sighed. I guess I might as well explain, since you're going to ask anyway. Explain what? Aura asked. Discord snapped his paw, clamping a very large wooden clothespin on Aura's beak. Don't interrupt me! He snapped his paw again, and a book of equestrian history pops out of thin air along with reading glasses. Discord opens it and starts reading it aloud. A long time ago, in a soon-to-be equestrian wasteland pretty close to here, I was a glorious statue. When I was brought to the research center by Rarity, that little whiner, she experimented on me with her two little idiot goons. She was studying that black book and decided she'd try her hoof at a little soul magic. I, of course, was the first subject. She and the other two cut off part of my soul and stuffed me into this wonderful little lamp that I'd left behind years ago during my reign, which lasted all but an afternoon. I was used as an office lamp from then on that wouldn't break or wouldn't leave its bulb rechanged. Then the mega spells came and I was lost under a puddle of rubble for years until a lucky scavenger dug me out and sold me to a merchant. It was all downhill from there. I eventually was stolen from an unsuspecting family in a home invasion by that gator fellow and hung up on a rusty, smelly, and not to mention run-down shack. Then you know the rest. So you're a soul jar? I asked. Yes and no. The lamp is a soul jar and I'm the piece of my soul that was bound to it. The reason I brought you here is to reunite me with the rest of my soul so I can be whole again. Discord explained. Whole again? So you can do what? Break free and make the equestrian wasteland even worse than it is? I asked again. Worse? To be honest, I was thinking of fixing up the joint. The whole radiation and my blood everywhere thing is kind of tasky, if you ask me. Although I'd probably make a few improvements. No. We won't help you do that. I'd rather deal with the wasteland the way it is and let you tamper with it and turn the whole place into some drug-fueled nightmare, I said as Stardust tried muffling something through the rolled-up sock in his mouth. Discord frowned. Well then, we'll be back after these messages. And coming up next, Equestria's Funniest Home Videos! Do you experience symptoms of herpigonocephalitis, such as burning, itching, genital bleeding, occasional death, and reverse fever dreams? Hi, I'm Dr. Discord, Lord of Chaos. If you've suffered from any of these symptoms, then you should talk to me, your primary physician, about Killiskank. Killiskank is a drug formulated and proven to treat, stop the spread of, and eventually cure Herpigonocephalitis within three centuries or less. Dr. Cottage from the hit drama Dr. Cottage MD has tested this drug on himself and here's his response. I still have the disease, but at least I don't have to say I don't on this commercial. Ah, oh, pity. I thought he was a team player. Anyway, side effects of the drug will probably kill all of you, but blah 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 next! Coming this Friday to a theater near you. Fallout Equestria, Falling Shadows, the movie, with big name actors such as Shadowstar, Stardust, Hora Blood Talon, and the rest of the band of misfits you remember from your favorite best-selling book, all repraising their roles in this book-to-movie drama thriller. Watch as Shadow hopelessly wanders the wasteland with her idiot friends to find her mentally unstable mother and get answers to her life and save the equestrian wasteland from a certain death. Early patrons at select theaters will receive ponchos upon purchase of a 4D movie ticket for all the blood and gore that'll eventually cover you from head to hoof. Only showing in select theaters. Book your tickets now and enjoy with the whole family. I found myself on a strange set with what looked like a camera in front of me. What the hell am I doing here? Hi, I'm Shadowstar. 
from the upcoming film, Followed Equestria, Falling Shadows, the movie, coming to theaters this Friday. I said seductively. Why seductively? Why did I say that at all? I just can't get through the day of filming without an ice-cold spark cola with its great original taste and radioactivity. I gulp down every sip of it as if it were my last. Spark cola, the apocalypse awaits. I'm beginning to hate Discord more than I already do. Hello, I'm Discord, Lord of Chaos, Attorney at Law. Have you recently been run over by a carriage? Stepped on by a giant monster, or slightly eaten by other ponies? Here at Chaos Law and Associates, my fellow Discords and I believe you shouldn't have to suffer such things without any compensation. Head down to my offices in the fifth dimension for a free consultation to see what you can do about your recent accident or victimization. You can also call toll free, though a very rare she shell found on the deepest depths of the largest volcano in Equestria. Otherwise, it's the third building on your left, off of Not Main Street and 13th Avenue, right next to the Shadow Zone. Tonight, on Equestria's Funniest Home Videos, we get to see a unicorn fly, a griffin get drunk, and a pegasus or two have a bit of a crash. Now here's your host, the one, the only, Discord! Hello, everypony, I'm your host, Discord, Lord of Chaos, and this is Equestria's favorite epic fail, primetime show. Equestria's Funniest Home Videos! Tonight on our show, we won't be giving away roses to potential lovers like some desperate divorced housewife. No one will fall into a pit of mud after bouncing off the slide of a giant red rubber ball off an obstacle. Of course, even though it is pretty funny. And no one will find out if they have talent or not. However, we have clips like this. I suddenly found myself on top of a two-story house looking down at a trampoline. Oh, God, this is no. What did I do to deserve this? Then I started to uncontrollably walk forward and jump. Ah! I yelled as I fell forward onto the trampoline. When I hit, I immediately bounced and went flying into a nearby fence, face first. Ow! Son of a beep! Oh, that wasn't a very good idea, now was it? Every pony knows unicorns can't fly. In this next video, the creature can fly, but really shouldn't. After a quick flash, I found myself in an audience, looking at the big screen on the stage. I couldn't move or talk, but I could see Aura drunkenly fly into a sliding glass door on the video on the screen. What? No laugh? Another Discord said from next to me. I looked around and saw that the entire audience were discords. I won't let you ruin my show by talking, but you can laugh freely at your friend's shenanigans. I shook my head as hard as I could. Mm. The next video that played was Stardust and Wind Thrasher as a bride and groom at a wedding. Now, this is quite the picture, isn't it? The funny thing is what will happen next. I didn't even need to write it into the script for tonight's show. I looked at the video again, and Stardust tried to speak as the minister recited wedding stuff. I... Uh... What are we... Then, without warning, the still-normal-looking Wind Thrasher passed out. Stardust uh, reached to catch her and said, Wind Thrasher, are you okay? Then the video cut out, and the host Discord started speaking again, but I couldn't hear him over the Discord next to me. Really, Shadow? Not even a chuckle? What kind of friend doesn't laugh at their friends? How about we change the channel? And we're back with Police Force Live. Let's check back on the officer we follow in Round Pines, Northern Equestria. Round Pines, Northern Equestria. Why are we in a carriage? Wait, where's Stardust? Are you guys okay? Yeah. It hurts a little from that damn window, Aura said, rubbing her head slightly. I barely remember what happened. One minute I was standing at an altar with Stardust, and then I was here, Windthrasher said with a small blush. 
And then I noticed something through the back window. What's that flashing red light? Oh no, probably something that's gonna kill us as usual, Aura said plainly. I gasped and grabbed the carriage's side window with my magic and pulled it open to see Stardust standing before the strange mare in a uniform. Okay, sir. I want you to walk in a straight line. Hoof to hoof, ten paces. Okay, and then what after that? Stardust asked. We'll just see what happens first, the strange mare replied. Stardust, what are you doing? I guess this is some sort of crime show and I was stopped for suspected drunk flying, he replied as he completed his task. The, I guess, police officer smiled. All right, sir. Now I want you to stand up straight in front of me and follow my hoof without turning your head. Only move your eyeballs. What? That sounds stupid. Stardust protested. I could just put you in hoof cuffs right now if you'd like and take a blood test at the jail. She responded. Stardust sighed. Okay, just start the test. I watched as she performed this strange test of hers and asked, So why does he need to do all this? Oh, this is just a test of motor skills to see if he's impaired in any way. It's called a field sobriety test. She explained as she continued the test. But we're on a road. No, stupid shadow, don't say that. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. Just sit back and relax. If I end up having to take him in, I'll call your parents to come pick you up. The officer said with a genuine chuckle. Is that it? Are we done with the test now? Stardust asked. Nope, I'm going to need you to blow into this, she said. What's that? Stardust asked, perplexed by the odd nature of the small battery-operated machine. This is a breathalyzer device. Just blow into this tube for a few seconds and it'll tell me your blood alcohol level, she answered. Why couldn't we have just started with that? You could have saved so much time if you just started with that, Stardust said. She gave him a slightly shooty look. Sir, I need to make sure you're not having a serious medical event preventing you from properly operating the sky carriage. Now, just put your mouth on the tube and blow. It'll be over before you know it. Ugh. All right, fine, he said as he leaned forward to the little machine. Blow, 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 blow. Done, she said as the machine beeped. Looks like you're the lucky winner of all zeros. Ah, crap, Stardust said as he looked at the ground as if he'd committed a heinous crime. She awkwardly cleared her throat. <clears> throat> um, sir, that means you're good to go. Oh, sweet! Boring! Discord's disembodied voice spoke. And we're back with Equestria Wesseling Showdown. I'm Discord, Lord of Chaos. And I'm also Discord, Lord of Chaos. Right now, we have the macho stallion, bloody savage, facing off against the lightweight newcomer, Stardust. Let's watch. I was suddenly sitting in the front row of some stadium bleachers, as Stardust stood on some sort of weird stage with a pile of muscle. Stardust, can you hear me? He turned and looked in my direction. What? Then a huge brute spoke up. Your little horn-faced friend can't save you from the swole, my winged friend. The macho stallion's gonna scramble you and eat you for breakfast. Oh, yeah! Then he started to charge at Stardust, who flinched and put his hooves in front of his face. Then I heard Discord's voice again. Fake! Here we go, some originality! Discord said. We're back. On Equestrian Family. Guys, where are we now? And why do you look like pastel drawings? I asked my friends as I looked around at an untouched by war Ponyville. It looks like we're somewhere in the past and across the country, Stardust said. A familiar face popped up in front of mine. Hi, you must be new to town. I only say that because I've never seen you before and I know every pony in Ponyville. I'm Pinkie Pie. What's your name? Like Ministry Mayor Pinkie Pie? I asked. 
No, silly. Pinkie Pie, Pinkie Pie. Ponyville's own super duper party pony. In fact, I'm going to throw you all a welcome party to celebrate. Although, I'll need to know your names for the banners. She replied. I can't believe this. I'm face to face with one of the ministry mayors in the flesh. I'm so underdressed. I'm Shadowstar. That's Stardust, Aura, and Wind Thrasher. Oh my goodness! Those names are so cool! Just like super awesome adventurers like me and my friends! Pinkie Pie said as she bounced up and down on all fours, making a springy sound somehow. I have to go start planning this party as soon as possible! Um, maybe there's another way out of this place without Discord letting us out. While you plan the party, is it alright if we browse the library? Of course you can! Even better is that you can meet my friend Twilight! She's a super bookworm, but she's really nice and has more books than any pony in town. Well, technically that's because she lives in the library, but to be honest, I think she'd have the same amount of books even if it wasn't a library. Anyway, welcome to Ponyville. See you later. She replied and then blissfully bounced off to go plan the welcome party. That was weird. I've only seen pictures of her on posters and other propaganda around the wasteland, saying she's watching me forever. Now I might start believing it, Stardust said. This world isn't real, remember? Mora said snarkily. And? Doesn't mean it still doesn't creep me out a bit, Stardust retorted. But, Shadow, why are we going to the library? Windthresher asked. Because even in a world created by the Lord of Chaos, the Ministry Mares are still themselves. Discord may be the Lord of Chaos, but he pays attention to detail. Remember in the hospital, all the ponies we met in past encounters acted the exact same, like Nurse Joy and Dr. Cottage. They weren't altered from the real ones that we know. And there's Pinkie Pie here. Before she was a Ministry Mayor, she was Ponyville's party planner and head of welcoming committee, exactly as we just saw. Therefore, if we explain our situation to Twilight Sparkle, we might find a way to get out of here. I explained. I don't know why you just explained that out loud. Discord's just gonna change the channel, and whatever now. Laura said. I don't think so. Ever since he revealed himself at the hospital, I've sort of been able to feel his presence. Here I can't. I don't think he's powerful enough to control this entire world with us here straining his magic as he has. Otherwise, there's the fact that this is all just a game to him, and no one likes an overpowered player. I explained as we walked through Ponyville. It was so strange to see the small town with a bright shining sun in the blue sky with ponies walking the streets and browsing the stands. It seemed more colorful than the dull dreariness of the wasteland too, and a lot cleaner. There wasn't the distinct smell of decay in the air, just fresh, uncorrupted air. I wished in a small way that I could stay in this place forever, but I couldn't forget about the ponies and others we needed in the wasteland. I needed to find a way out of here, and fast. It's seriously a frickin' tree? Aura asked. Yeah, don't you know any of question history? Windthrasher asked. Aura smirked. No offense, but not everyone can be as big of a bookworm as you, Windthrasher. I beg to differ. I said as I knocked on the arched wooden door of the library. The door opened and a small purple and green dragon said, Oh, hello. Is there something I can help you with? I need to speak to the min... I mean librarian? Twilight Sparkle? See, my friends and I are new to town and need some help with something. We were told Twilight might be able to help us. I replied to the little dragon. Twy! The little dragon called out. Some new ponies in town want to speak to you. Thank you, Spike. Twilight said from behind Spike. What seems to be the issue? I think it might be better if we speak in private. It's a little weird. I replied, feeling a little nervous. <laughs> weird? Believe me, Ponyville's seen its share of weird. I'm sure it's nothing any pony would be surprised about. Twilight said with an innocent smile. Ugh. I'm going to look like a psychotic nuke in front of one of the Ministry Mayors in public and probably make a fool of myself. Well, here goes. 
I'm from another world that's the same as this one, but it's like 200 years, give or take, in the future, in the post-apocalyptic wasteland riddled with terrifying monsters, radiation, deranged ponies, griffins, and zebras. The reason I came for you to help is because where I come from, you're one of the greatest political figures and scientists of the past and accomplished great feats, and I was hoping you could get me back there so I can save ponies from the eventual catastrophe. She gave me a surprised stare, and her left eye twitched. Uh-huh. Yeah, let's talk inside. We all walked inside, and Windthrasher looked around with bright eyes. So many books. Then Twilight shut the door. Your what? From another world? Didn't you hear what Shadow said? Stardust said sarcastically. Yes, I'm aware of what she said. Whatever your name is, it's just impossible. She replied. My name is Stardust. And in case I wasn't apparent, the short one is Shadow. The other one is our Wind Thrasher, the Pegasus, and Aura the Griffin. Stardust said, pointing out at my small stature. Hmm, he hasn't done that in a while. If it's impossible, then how are we here? I asked. Okay, it shouldn't be possible, unless it was a spell cast by some pony with incredible amounts of magic, Twilight said. Are you familiar with the Draconius by the name of Discord? I asked, trying to get to the point of how we got here. She face hoofed in horror. Oh no, I thought the elements sealed him in stone again. Maybe here, but not in our world. Well, technically he's in a ceramic lamp, but he's still able to use some magic to mess with us. In our world, I pulled the switch on the lamp and ended up in what he calls TV land, I explained. Then a blob appeared on the floor. I think that's enough sharing with the class, Shadow. Discord, Twilight shouted. Don't you lay a claw or lion paw or whatever else you have on them. Discord snapped his claws and Twilight's mouth disappeared. Now you'll get back when you'll learn how to speak and ask nicely. How convenient you show up now, I said angrily. I know, right? So dramatic for a children's show. You'd almost think more adults watch this than children. Anyway, time for a channel change. You're all a bit too old for this kiddie show. What? No! I shouted. Too late! Fuck! I shouted as my plastic hooves hit a clay setting. Great. Now we're in some cheaply produced creep show as Foles Toys. Yeah, my mouth isn't even moving. It's like an animated mouth shows up in front of my muzzle when I talk. Stardust said, rubbing his face. Oh, great, another pastel-colored place! I said as I looked over at the old pony and young buck standing in front of us. Hey, Morty, check it out. Another freaking universe came into us this time because I'm a genius and you're just a whiny piece of shit. The old pony with the white hair said, Ah, jeez, Rick, this, this is freaking me out, the twitchy young buck said. The old pony belched. It's cool, that weird chimera monster thing, you'll get him out of here in just a sec. Everyone knows if they reference us too long, they'll get sued. The next thing we knew, we were in a circle of what looked like salt with moose and squirrel. Just stay in the circle and you'll be safe. Ghost can't pass through that barrier, Moose said. Let's go fry this bitch's bones, Squirrel says. They both walked out to the front door and to the rundown house we were apparently standing in. Once again, we found ourselves in what looked like a colorful garden outside of a brick building. Is that a river of sparkle cola? Discord stood before us, dressed in a purple suit with a cane and a top hat. Hello, my loyal playthings. Welcome to my very own candy factory. Why do I feel like those candy flowers are going to do something weird to me, like turn me into a mare? Stardust asked. It's not, but that's a creative idea, Discord said, then snapped his lion paw. I looked over at Stardust and noticed that he'd suddenly become a lot more... feminine. You had to say something, didn't you? Ah, I want to go home, 
Sardis exclaimed, grabbing at him herself in certain areas in dismay. Careful what you wish for, Stardust. There's a lot more where that came from, Discord remarked. Just let us out of this place, when Thrasher demanded with a tear in her eye. Oh, but the fun is just beginning, he retorted. What do you mean? Or asked. Then music started to play and Discord began to sing. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure chaos and devastation. Take a look and you'll see into my master plan and preparation. He began to dance around the garden as he continued. We'll begin with an evil grin, cascading through the universe on my creation. What you'll see will defy logical explanation. If you want to be in paradise, just bite a candy mushroom and chew it. Anything you do, you can do it. Want to change reality? Just believe it me. <laughs> Why is he singing... I started to say. Discord put a claw to my muzzle and teleported us to a boat in a sparkle cola river. Now it's my time for a prize, he said and took another breath as the music started to continue. There's no life, I know, to compare with pure chaos. Living with it, I can be free to truly be me. I can't take this crap anymore. What the hell do you want from me? This damn TV land of yours is a living hell. Oh, the answer is so simple. I've already told you. Just put the pieces together and figure it out. Enjoy the ride along the way. He said as he raised his claw again. Stop doing... I started to say. There's a fifth dimension where I used to live. Beyond that of which is known to pony kind. It is a dimension as vast as outer space. And, as timeless as a antique rug, your cat is probably ruined while you're watching this. It's a balance between light and darkness, between arcane science and zebra magic. It lies in a pit of ponykind's fears and the summit of their knowledge. It is a dimension of chaos, an area of which I, its almighty creator, calls the Shadow Zone. Episode number 2077. The Direction of Misdirection. It is the distant future, many years ago, in a group of friends found themselves in a quaint neighborhood with inhabitants who could do no wrong, but could also do no right. Everything was as ordinary as ordinary could be. Young foals playing in the park in the center of the small community, Males cooking dinner for their husbands when they came home from the office, and a death dog barking at the male pony. Will the four friends prevail in the end, or will they fall prey to their innermost misgivings about themselves? Why the beep is everything in black and white? I asked as I looked around at the pre-war era neighborhood. And where the hell did Discord go this time? I don't know about all of that, but I'm still stuck like this, and I have a nagging urge to make a casserole, Stardust said in his newly acquired feminine voice. Aura sighed. Too bad for Wind Thrasher. She was so close. Close to what? Stardust asked, confused about Aura's remark. Wind Thrasher blushed with her normal pony face and her eyes moved sporadically, as if she was trying to come up with a well-crafted lie, but only had ten seconds to do so. Um, well, ah, uh, Well, what is it? Stardust asked again. Casseroles! She exclaimed, attracting the attention of the whole neighborhood. Casseroles! Stardust said with a tilt of his slash her head. Y yes I love to make casseroles. When Thrasher replied awkwardly, Stardust immediately looked delighted. Really? That's awesome. Then, when we get out of here, you think you could make one for us? I'd make one for you any time. You as in all of you, I mean? When Thrasher asked uh, anxiously. That's all besides the point, 
I said, interrupting their weird conversation about food. We need to figure out this place. It's pretty simple, Stardust said. There's no color, the cul-de-sac goes in a circle for some reason, and the foals playing on the playground in the center creep me out with their unnaturally happy expressions. And that's sort of a blunt way to put it, I replied, then turned to a young filly playing with the swing set. Excuse me, can you tell us where we are? The swing slowly came to a stop as her orange curled mane came to a rest from blowing in the wind. Then she smiled. Don't be silly. This is Pleasant Lane, the keenest street in town. Every pony knows this place and wants to live here. But we only have six houses, so they can't. Want to play with me? There's a town around here? How could there be if the road doesn't go anywhere? I asked. Of course there's a town, silly goose. How could there not be? If there wasn't, then there wouldn't be a neighborhood. So do you want to play with me? She replied. I'm sorry. I can't play with you right now. My friends and I need to get out of here. I said, answering her question. Why don't you want to play with me? She asked. Why does she keep asking me to play with her? I don't have time for fun and games right now. Because my friends and I have something really important to do. So we need to get out of this place. Can we be friends? Then you won't have to leave. You can stay here forever and play with me. She said. I turned to Stardust and said through my gritted teeth, I'm going to <laughs> peeping back hoof this little beep if she doesn't stop asking me to stay and play with her. Stardust sighed. Allow me. Then she stepped closer to the filly. Look, kid, we're not going to play with you. We got important stuff to do, and that thwarts playing with children. All we want to do is leave, but we don't know how. She only smiled. Hey, do you want to play with me? Stardust just turned and walked away as we followed. And I asked quickly, Where are we going? Away from her, she replied. Why? I stupidly asked again. So I don't wring that little beep's neck. Aura snickered. I'd say cruel, but I was thinking the same thing. Also, what's with that beeping sound every time we curse? It's Discord, probably did this to the world to annoy us, I replied. So, what do we do now? When Thresher asked. Aura looked around. There seems to be adults here in the houses and in their yards. We could ask them some questions and hope they aren't as creepy, as intimidating as the kid. Yeah, but there's so many. Maybe we should split up and talk to them separately, I suggested. Sounds like a plan to me, Aura said with a nod. Second, Stardust said. I just hope none of them are as goody two sh horseshoes as they seem. And this world can't be so innocent all the time. It just makes a boring life. To be honest, I'd go beeping insane if I had to live here for the rest of my life. I might even kill everyone. You wouldn't kill the children, Wind Thrasher said. Stardust stopped and put a hoof on her shoulder. We all have our limits. Kids who look like they're going to murder me in my sleep? That's my limit. Wind Thrasher looked a little heartbroken. That's so horrible, but... She sighed. I guess I could see where you're coming from. Like the real anyway. I guess we should go our separate ways and talk to the adults. Alright then. Aura, you talk to those ponies in those two houses. Wind Thrasher, you take those two. Stardust, you take the last two. I'll talk to the other kid in the park and the male pony. Also, that dog over there seems familiar. I'm going to go check that out, I said. That doesn't sound fair, Stardust protested. You don't have any houses to check at all. Merely just another one of those weird kids, a male pony, and a dog. When did you learn how to talk to animals? I scoffed. I don't talk to animals. I just recognize the dog from somewhere, that's all. And at least I didn't make you talk to the kids. Fair point. Stardust said with a bit of a shiver as he looked at the park again. We all split into our assigned houses, and I was coming up to the male pony. Excuse me. Woo! Golly, did you give me quite a startle. How can I help you, miss? The male pony replied. I'm sort of 
new around here, and I was wondering if you could give me directions out of town? I said in the cheery, uplifting voice these ponies were accustomed to. Leave? Who in blue bases would want to leave? Pardon my French. The male pony asked. I would. I have somewhere important to be. He gave me a whatever look and waved his hoof. Important? Please, this place is the best gosh darn place in the entire world. Whatever you got going on elsewhere, I'm sure it'll resolve itself on its own. Stay a while and settle down. It's a really great up and coming neighborhood. I should know. I deliver the mail here every day. I guess this guy is hopeless. Maybe he can answer some different questions about this place, though. What's up with that dog over there? No, oh, him? Dogs hate the male pony. Every pony knows that. He replied with another wave of his hoof. Okay, then. Why is everything in black and white? He looked extremely puzzled at my question. I don't understand. It's always been this way, as long as I can remember. Hasn't been color here ever. Just apple pies, honeydew lists, and good old-fashioned family values. It's always been this way? Of course. Also, I heard you using some particularly foul language over near the children. You should have your wa mouth washed out with a bar of soap, young missy. Or at least learn to wash it. You don't want the youngins learning all sorts of colorful language like that and being disrespectful. But I, when they start acting like that, tons of awful things can happen in the land where little buggers in jail when they're older. I'm surprised you're not behind bars right now. The male pony replied. I've technically been in jail before, but I was actually innocent. I said, not thinking about what could have come next. He gasped in surprise. To think I sullied myself talking to the likes of you. Every pony in jail says they're innocent, but that's usually because they're guilty of something. The only thing I'm guilty of is hating this place. Now, can you tell me how to get the beep out of here, or not? Shame on you. Words like that should never be spoken in polite company. Good day to you, miss, he said, and then walked over to the next mailbox, uh-huh. Jeez, what a prune. Ugh, this is gonna take forever. I walked over to the park again and approached the young buck, sitting alone on the seesaw. He looked up at me with his creepy smile, Stardust hated so much, and said, Hello, you wanna play seesaw with me? I asked the new filly over there, but she was really mean to me, and she only wants to play with you because you're new to this place, too. I thought about it and figured I might as well do what the kid wanted and sat on the seesaw. He might actually give me some straight answers if I cooperate. Sure, I'll play with you. You're not annoying like she is. Annoying. Don't say that, or I'll think you're mean, too. That's not a nice thing to say about some pony. He said as I positioned myself on the other side and slid backwards of the seesaw, sending the buck side upward. All right, I'll be nice. It's just that when I talked to her earlier, she didn't want to answer my questions and wasn't listening to what I was saying. I said in a somewhat of defense of myself. So how long have you lived here? I've always lived here. I can't remember not living here. I think my family moved here when I was really little, but I'm not quite sure. He replied. Are there any other kids your age here that you play with? I asked. He looked sad again. No, I'm the only one. And the adults don't let me do anything I want. Well, that's part of being young. You have boundaries set by adults most of the time to keep you safe. I said, trying to cheat him, cheer him up. That's not what I mean. They don't let me go anywhere. I want to go places and meet new ponies. He said, his voice still filled with melancholy. Do you know how to leave this place? I asked, hoping to get some sort of answer. No, I just stay here and play in the park by myself till the day comes, when I'm big enough to leave on my own. My neighbors went on vacation once, but I was asleep when they left, so I didn't get to see where they left. It made me feel sad because it's bad luck to not see some pony off when they leave on a trip, he explained. I thought about the detailed innocence of this kid in a world created by Discord. There's got to be some part of him that has this innocence like this. On second thought, he gender been stardust. Have you seen a strange creature around here? Anywhere with like a lion's paw, a bird's claw, and a bunch of other strange things? No. The only strange creature around here is my neighbor's dog. 
Anyway, I should get off the seesaw and go home. Supper will be ready soon, and I don't want to keep my mother waiting. He replied. I stopped pushing up on the slide of my slaw and stepped off, holding my side of my magic and gently letting the kid down. There you go, kid. I'll see you later. Bye. See you next time. He said as he ran home. I watched as he ran and saw which house he went into. I once again saw a familiar dog barking again, so I approached the white picket fence it was chained behind. When I got up to the fence, the dog stopped barking and looked at me. It was a strange dog. It was a wasteland dog. When I looked at the name on the doghouse, it read, Rar. Just like the death dog I met in the bramble. Rar? What has Discord done with you? You're so tiny. Rawr! Was all the response I got from the canine. And a tiny terrifying growl. This is hopeless. I'll never figure out a way out of this fucked up place. I said to myself as I trudged back over to the park and waited for the others. I sat on the bench in the park to wait for the others to finish talking to the adults, when the same filly from earlier came up to me. Wanna play with me now? No, just leave me alone, please. She stuck her tongue out at me. Fine. Then Stardust came next to me on the bench. This place is the worst. I couldn't get a single straight answer about any pony in this neighborhood. However, I did get a particular piece of pie from some mare who's cheating on her husband. I'm not a less say who, though, even though she didn't tell me in the first place. I agree. All I figured out is that the male pony has a giant stick up his ass, and there's a kid here with some serious depression issues. I replied. Then Nora walked up. You know what? It might just be easier to get out of here if we just kill ourselves. That's if this current trash heap we're in isn't so stupidly safe about everything. I thought this was supposed to be an old-timey place where toys were burning kids and adults were taking drugs that caused their children to have birth defects. So no luck for you either? Stardust asked. Not a bit. Apparently, one of those places is vacant. I'm pretty sure some pony lives there, though, seeing as there's furniture and everything set up. Aura replied. Then finally, Windthrusher showed up with a sad look on her face. Hey, guys. What's wrong, Windthrusher? I asked. I failed. By the looks of your faces, you didn't have luck either. I don't care how horrible the wasteland is. This place is worse. I want to go home and be normal. And have Stardust be a stallion again? She replied. Thank you for caring about my hard situation so much. But I'm adjusting to it. Although I'm afraid if trying to go to the bathroom. I don't want to get hit by one of you for abusing my gender. Stardust said uncomfortably. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Laura said plainly. Ah, oh, thank the goddesses. I thought you'd be angry with me. I totally asked to use the restroom of one of those houses I went to. The ponies were really nice. A little too nice sometimes, but, uh, he or she replied. And then was met with a kick to his stomach by Aura. Weirdo, she said as Stardust gasped for air. What happened to you gotta go when you gotta go? I thought you understood. Stardust said through breaths. I did understand until you made it weird. Just shut up and start thinking of ways to get us the hell out of here, she retorted. You'll never figure it out, the little filly said from behind us. What? I asked quizzically. Well, Shadow, I'm saying that you'll never defeat me, she said in an all too familiar voice. Discord, we all said in unison. The one and only. Welcome to the most pleasant place on television, Pleasant Lane. Not one of my favorite places, but somewhere I could get you cornered and mess around with you a little, he said, his masculine voice still coming out of this tiny filly. I should have known he'd be disguised as some pony so innocent, but I never trust a filly with a curly mane who smiles like that. I give up. I'll help you with whatever evil scheme you want, no matter how disastrous it ends up being. I just want out of this place, I said, surrendering to the cocky Draconicus. Really? 
flash. He won't betray me and end up leaving me to rot somewhere. He asked as he transformed back into his real form. Yes, whatever you want, I replied. Shadow, you can't be serious. Haven't you noticed what he did to me? Stardust asked. I know, but do any of you see any other way out of this? Because all I'm seeing is us getting thrown around another dimension like playthings of Lord of Chaos, I replied. Or at least part of him. Oh, but the best part, Discord said. And what I want is as simple as delivering a package. That is your job, isn't it? What does it matter? What, you want me to deliver something for you, like a postcard or something stupid like that? I asked. He smiled with a mischievous grin. I want you to deliver me. Um, what? I asked in response to his answer. What do you mean by deliver you? I think he means literally shadow, Stardust said. Remember what he is in the real world? Just a desk lamp shaped like a draconicus holding a light bulb? It seems that one of you isn't completely incompetent, Discord said with another grin. I want to be free from this awful existence. Do you know how boring it is just watching everyone all the time? Sure, I can take them here or send them to another dimension, but what fun is that after 200 years? You're sick. I wouldn't help you get out of that lamp ever, even if I had to stay in this place for the rest of my life. All you'd end up doing is making the wasteland worse than it already is, I said. Make the wasteland worse? Now why would I do a little thing like that? Discord asked. Because you're evil, Stardust said. You gender-bent me and your terrorized Equestria years ago. So what? I made a little chocolate rain from cotton candy clouds once and took the virtues of the only six mares who could have saved them all from my reign of so-called terror. I honestly think Celestia looked better with clown hair rather than a freaky flowing mane. In all reality, I'm not evil. Just a trickster with nothing to do. I'm just disorderly. I thought about it and contemplated the consequences. What would you do if I helped you to escape the lamp? I'd gladly live out the rest of my immortal days in the fifth dimension, reading the classics and enjoying some mildly flavored teas. Now, if you believe that, you're an even bigger idiot than I thought you were. He replied. What would you do? I asked again. What would you think I'd do? From what you've experienced so far in my world, tell me what I would do in the wasteland. Discord asked. You would do absolutely nothing? I answered, only really guessing. You're only half right. As a thank you for helping me escape this lamp, I'd refrain from corrupting the wasteland further than it already is. Honestly, it's gaudy how it's overcluttered with all that death and destruction, he explained. Really? You'd leave the wasteland alone? You wouldn't even try to change anything? I asked further. You think I'd help and try to make things for the better? I unfortunately don't have the power to do that. I'm only a small part of one whole. Out there in the real world, all I'd have the power to do is something so simple as putting some random bottle caps oddly in an office desk or a restroom medical kit. Discord answered. Fine, then. Let us out of this goddess-forsaken place, and I'll take you with us to figure out how to get you out of the lamp. Then you can do what you please, as long as you don't make the wasteland worse. And you do once you make yourself complete, just... Leave it alone, I said. Shadow, what the hell are you doing? We can't trust him. He's the lord of chaos. For all we know, yes means no, Mora said. I think Shadow's making the right decision, Stardust said. Think about it. If she doesn't get out of here, then eventually Aquila will gain control of her body and cause extreme catastrophe worse than the likes of him. In comparison, he's the lesser of two evils. But... What if he is lying? When Thresher asked. Then I guess I underestimated the word of the Lord of Chaos. I answered, then looked back at Discord. So, 
I guess we have a deal? It seems so, he said, raising his lying paw. For a moment, I thought I was going to find myself in another strange world made up by Discord. But when I opened my eyes, I found myself lying next to the desk where Discord's lamp was resting. I got back to my hooves and looked back at my friends, who were also just waking up. You guys okay? Stardust rubbed his head. I had the strangest dream. His eyes went wide and he started to feel around his body. Oh, <laughs> thank the goddesses I'm a stallion again. And I feel like my old self too, Windthrasher said. It was nice to be a normal pony for a while again, but honestly it felt strange. I forgot how hard it is to hear things when you don't have enhanced hearing. I guess it wasn't a dream then, Horace said, looking over at the lamp. How long were we out? About five seconds, I heard Oricalis say from the door. Shadow turned on that lamp and you all passed out for a few seconds. I looked over at him. Really? It felt like we were in there forever. My uncle looked over at the lamp. Whatever's inside that lamp tried to use its magic on me, too. But I'm more powerful. Whatever. We're out of the thing, and I made a deal with Discord so we could leave. We'll take the lamp with us when we head out. I said, looking back at it. My uncle came over to me and used his magic to slowly pull me away from the lamp. Discord? No way. If he's in that thing, then you aren't getting anywhere near it. Discord's voice quietly echoed out of the lamp. Hey, she made me a deal. Oricalis looked at Discord and frowned. Too bad. If you are Discord, then I know what you are. Star has enough problems with strange magic as it doesn't need you to make her life worse. Whatever she promised you, I'll take over. Hmm. I guess I can live with that. As long as I'm reunited with the rest of my soul, you have a deal. The only question is, how are you going to transport me? I won't easily fit inside a saddlebag. It seems casually sitting around like this all the time has caused me to gain some exponential volume, Discord said. Oricala smiled. Easy. His horn glowed, and a moment later the lamp shrunk to the size of a keychain. He lifted it up and walked over to where an old satchel was lying and put Discord into it. Easy as that. And I won't have to listen to him talk. Are you sure that's going to work? I asked. And how did you make him smaller? Normally, no unicorn should be able to manipulate a soul jar, but my magic is different. The spell is easy. Also, whatever you promised him, I'll be able to do. His magic can't influence me, and he can't do anything to you while he's with me, Oricala said, turning his head back to my mom, who was sitting on the bed, still tied up and glaring at us with a gag in her muzzle. I guess I can deal with that, I said. So what do we do now? We sleep, Ora said. We need a few hours of rest before we set out again. Hey, Oricalus. Doesn't that gorge thing mess with your magic, too? Stardust asked as he walked over to Aura, who had already set up in one spot in a corner for us. It does, but I can deal with it better than most. Shadow and my sister will have a hard time with it, though if I get too close to it, my body could disappear. He said. Now, sis, be a good mare and go to sleep. If you don't make trouble for every pony, then I might take the gag out. Ah, please, anything but that, Aura commented. All we need is for her to blob on about evil this and evil that, and I'm going to destroy you all. Mom just glared at him, then laid down as best she could with her restraints. I couldn't help but smile and chuckle a little as I nestled up next to Aura. She wrapped a talon around me and pulled me close. Get some rest, Shadow. You need it. I closed my eyes. You too, love. Thanks, Shorty, she said as I drifted off to sleep, doing my best to forget about the world we had just left. Shadow, get up now, Oricalus yelled, pulling me in out of very nice dreams. 
I woke up with a startle, looking around, trying to find my uncle in the darkness. Uncle Ori, what's going on? All of you, get up and get your weapons! Orichalus yelled as lightning blasted across the sky, illuminating his body. Stardust yawned, asking, Orichalus, what's going on? Blood wings flying over the motel. There's only twenty so far. Normally I could deal with them easily, but it's storming outside. The lightning is making it impossible for me to leave this room. Shit. I said, getting up and pulling out misery from my saddlebags. If there's blood wings outside, then we have to deal with them before they get in here. A better chance with them out there. I agree. Laura said, lighting up her spear. Ain't no rest for the wicked. Let's go kill ourselves some bloodsuckers. As long as I'm not one of them, Windthrasher said. Stardust started to chuckle. I don't think any of us could kill you, Windthrasher. Now come on. I'll do what I can from in here, Morikella said. Good luck. My friends all headed out into the storm raging outside. Right away, Stardust opened fire. Windthrasher took the air alongside Aura. I started to head out the door when something slammed into me, knocking misery from my magical grip. I was slammed against the wall, then felt a pony fall on top of me. At the same time, Orikala yelled, Grim, get off of her! I heard misery being picked up from the floor, and the body was thrown off me. I couldn't see a thing, so I reached into my bags to grab my goggles and mask. As soon as I had them on, everything came into focus. Orikalos was standing next to me, blocking Mom, who was standing next to the far wall. Misery on the ground next to her. Grim, don't do this, Orikalos said. Mom just smiled and ran her ropes over Misery's sharp blade. Her bindings fell away in a second, the sharp edge cutting through the ropes like butter. She then reached up with a hoof and pulled off her gag. Ori, you'll pay for doing this to me. She picked up Misery and her muzzle and set around the handle. Both of you will. Star, get out of here. I can deal with my sister. Help your friends. Ori Callus yelled. I was going to argue with Mom holding that sword. No problem. Just don't kill her. He nodded and I headed out the door. Not much further, as Ori Callus yelled and a flash of lightning illuminating the doorway. Not now! I looked back and saw his body turning into shadows. Mom ran past him, bandaging misery. I'll finally take care of you! Wait a second. Mom wasn't a fighter. She was a magic user. What did she know about using a griffin sword? I sidestepped her clumsy charge to use my magic to rip the sword away from her. My magic was a little clumsy, but at least it still worked. I pulled my weapon back to me and shook my head. Worst escape attempt in history. She tripped and landed in the mud. Why can't I kill you? I heard a screech from overhead and saw a blood wing diving towards me. Now I saw what my friends meant when they said the ones in Stable 9 were smaller. The thing was twice the size of the ones in Windthrasher's stable, and a lot slower. I jumped aside and brought Misery down, cutting open its belly as it flew by. The monster screamed and slammed into the ground, leaving its guts trailing behind. I looked back at Mom. I don't have time to deal with this right now. If you can't tell, we're under attack by monsters. Either stay here and die or help us kill them. And how can I help you when I don't have a weapon or my magic? She asked, getting back to her hooves. Be creative. I'm sure you can think of something. Just remember, if you try to escape, you won't get far before one of us finds you. I said, turning to watch my friends fight through the bubble wings. Star! Bring her back here so I can tie her up! Orichalus yelled from the room. Sorry, I can't right now, Uncle Ori. I yelled as another blood wing flew towards me. I switched out my blade for Dreamwalker and opened fire on the monster. It fell as a bullet threw, flew through its head. If you can get her on between the lightning flashes, then fine with me, but if not, just tell me if she tries to run. Mom walked over to stand next to me with a frown on her face. No point running. With no weapons or magic, I won't get far. For now, I'll help you out. That is, until all of these monsters are dead. I looked over at her, confused. Really? She rolled her eyes. Right now, killing you isn't important. Though if Bloodwing gets you, I won't care much. I grinned. 
Well, at least I know not to count on you to watch my back. Can I at least get a weapon? Sorry, but no. I said, then I ran towards my friends who were still fighting on the monsters. Then I don't know how I can help you until you let me use something. Mom frowned as she followed me. I suggest you shut up and use that big brain of yours to figure a way out. I suggested as I swapped the Dreamwalker out for the plasma rifle, taking aim and firing at another Bloodwing that started to dive towards me. My shot blasted right in the face, turning it into a green goo in second. I sidestepped the splatter and entered Sask, taking aim at three Bloodwings that were going after Aura, who was in the middle of another fight. I fired, hitting two in the head, the third going down with one of its wings melting away. Lightning cracked and illuminated the sky for a second, and I saw blood wings in the sky, way more than Orichalis thought. I looked back at my friends. We have to get out of here now. There's way too many. And where do you plan on us going? Ora yelled back, flying down next to me. If you haven't noticed, these things can fly and blood wings will chase. I don't know, but we don't have any other choice. We can't fight in the open, I said, taking aim at another. That was trying to grab onto Stardust as he flew towards us. Look up at the Sky Carriage and let's get out of here. She's right. We can keep them at bay for a while while we fly. Let's go. Stardust said, heading towards the Sky Carriage. Wind Thrasher, do what you can to keep them all away. Shadow, get your mother and throw her into the Sky Carriage. Aura, get Orichalis. See if you can use your Shadow to help him keep safe from the lightning strikes. Everyone started to move as I fired at another Bloodwing who was trying to go after my mother who was hiding next to the motel. Time to leave, Grim. If I were you, I'd cooperate. If you don't, I'll just leave you to the monsters. Since I'd rather not see you suck dry, please make this as easy as you can. She looked over at me. You'd really leave me behind. I rolled my eyes and moved closer until I was a few inches away. Listen, I don't have time to deal with you right now. Our friends' lives are in danger because most of these monsters, and if it comes between keeping you alive or them, I'll choose them any day. You may be my mother, but as far as I'm concerned, that doesn't mean much to me anymore. Get your ass in gear and move. She rolled her eyes, too. Fine, but I'm only this doing this because I'd rather not die. Also, as I've told you before, I'm not your fucking mu- I turned around, my temper at its max, and slapped her. Shut the fuck up! I'm so sick of you going back to the same bullshit. If you were as smart as I know you are, you'd have at least looked deeper into who I am. I'm sure you know a spell that could tell you if I'm related to you at the very least. The only reason you're fighting me on this is because you're a stubborn bitch who doesn't want to admit she's wrong. Now get the fuck in the sky carriage. Shadow, duck! I heard Windthrusher yell right as I was finishing my statement. I ducked and twisted just as a blood wing flew over me and slammed into mom. I lifted the plasma rifle and fired on it killing it instantly. Mom rolled with a the monster, then skittered across the muddy ground, finally stopping a few inches away from the edge of the San Polinmo Gorge. Seeing that she was okay as she started to get back to her hooves, I looked back at Windthrasher. Thanks for the save, Windthrasher. No problem, she said, turning to face ten more blood wings flying towards her and my friends. She grinned, and I could see through my goggles that her eyes were glowing a soft green. Let's see if the tricks works on you as well as it is the ones in my home. Then she opened her muzzle and set out a wave of sound. At least I think she did. Or I could barely hear it. But something was flying right at the oncoming blood wings. At first, I was wondering what in the goddess's name she was doing. Then I saw they had stopped as soon as her voice slammed into them. Every single one of them landed and started to sniff around. Their own eyes, the same color as wind thrashers. She stopped her silent scream, then said, I'm not sure how long that'll hold them off. Hurry! Aura was just getting to the sky carriage. She looked over at Windthrasher, asking, What did you do? Windthrasher smiled a little. My bat DNA was from an alpha. I can make a sound that'll control the blood wings in my stable. These ones aren't the same kind of creature, but they did mutate from the same animal. I figured I'd try it. I can't control them like the ones from my home, but from what I can tell, their ears can't make sense of other sounds around them. In other words, I turned off their sonar. At least it won't long last long. So let's go. Stardust was already hooked up to the sky carriage. He turned towards me, yelling, Get Grim, now! Right. 
I said, turning back towards Mom, who was still standing at the edge of the gorge. She looked over at me, and I could tell that something was wrong. I don't think I can move. I walked closer to her. What do you mean? Just get over here and stop playing games. She glared at me. I'm not. As soon as I moved my hoof, I heard something crack under me. I think the ground will fall into the gorge at any time. I need a flyer to get me off this spot. She didn't even get a chance to finish what she was saying. The ground under her cracked, and she fell back towards the black opening. I dove for her and took hold of her hoof right as she went over the edge. I gotcha. She was hanging there, looking up at me with terror in her eyes. Wh why did you save me? Because you're my mom? Hold on tight. I said, starting to pull her up. Shadow, come on! Aura said from behind me. As she spoke, the ground under me started to slide, and I realized in horror that I too was about to fall into the gorge like my mother. If Aura didn't hurry, we'd both die before she could grab us. Hurry, Aura! The ground's giving away! I could hear flapping, but even if she flew as fast as she could, it wouldn't be fast enough. The ground slid faster, and I started to plummet into the gorge head first. Mom's eyes got wider as she fell back, but she held on tight. Right as my rear hoof slid away from the ground, I felt a talon take hold of me. Mom screamed, and her other hoof came up to hold on to me as we swung over the deep black pit. I got you, shorty, Nora said. I looked up at her and saw that she was holding onto my left rear leg with one of her talons. I couldn't help smiling as I said, Good timing. Can you pull us both up? Yeah, but it won't be easy. She said. The ground is soft from the rain and the wind's coming out of that gorge, making it impossible to fly over it. And just don't struggle. I'll be as still as possible. And just please don't drop us. Mom said. I could help a smile of satisfaction at my mother's fear. It was kind of nice to see her on the other end of it for a change. I looked up again at Aura and she started to slowly pull us. Then my smile fell as I saw yellow eyes coming out of the gloom behind her. Aura? There's a blood wing behind you. Drop us now. She looked back and saw it, then looked back at me. I can get you up quick enough. I'm not letting you go. You have to. I started to say, but Mom cut me off. Don't tell us or tell her to drop us. Shadow, I can do this. Now stop moving. The glowing eyes started to move faster. The shape of the monster taking form was leaping towards Aura. I tried to call my magic to stop it, but it wouldn't work. I was going to watch as the griffin I loved die as she tried to save me and my mom. Seizing my free hoof, I pulled Misery out, saying, I love you. Her eyes went wide as I used my other rear hoof to kick off the wall of the gorge, pulling my other leg out of her grip. My body flew back, and as I did, I threw Misery in the face of the oncoming Bloodwing. The blade sank into its head, and the monster slammed into the ground, then flew over the edge of the gorge. Falling onto its black depths, along with my mom and myself. I felt gravity take hold and all I could do was smile as I fell in. I ignored my mother's panicked screams and looked up into the beautiful icy blue eyes of the griffin I loved with all my heart. Shadow! Aura screamed as she fell. I just watched as her eyes turned to pinpricks of blue. I love you, Aura Blood Talon. I said one more time as her eyes were swallowed by the darkness of the San Palimo Gorge. The wasteland always wins in the end. I cheated death one too many times. I couldn't outrun it forever. At least with my death, my friends would live. Aura would live and Aquila would die with me, trapped at the bottom of a black pit. I love... I tried to say one more time. I never finished my last words and my body slammed into something and everything was gone. Footnote, level up. New perk added. Hunt's Pony. In combat, you do 50% more critical damage against mutated wasteland animals. Quest perk added. Interdimensional Cable. Because of your knowledge of other universes in the multiverse and their strange cultures and inventions thanks to the Lord of Chaos, you gain plus three to overall intelligence and have a gain a 25% chance of finding wild wasteland themed weapons, locations, and scenarios.